Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship today on a beautiful sunny day after many, many days of rain. I hope that all of your homes are do doing okay. Um, if you are someone who has a lot of water in your basement or if water has really torn up your land, please let us know so that we can come in and help you. Um, that's your morning announcements. <laughs> yeah, I invite you to stand as we begin our worship of the time of confession and forgiveness. I shouldn't be allowed to add live announcements. <laughs> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life, and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. We sing together our gathering song, number 870. We praise you, O God. our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also you. Let us pray. O God of creation, eternal majesty, you preside over land and sea, sunshine and storm. By your strength, pilot us. By your power, preserve us. By your wisdom, instruct us and by your hand protect us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Well, 
first reading is from Job 38, verses 1 through 11. <clears throat> the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Who is that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were this bases sunk? And who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together, all the heavenly beings shouted for joy. Or who shut up in the, shut in the sea door, with doors when it burst out from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment, and thick dark darkness in its swaddling band, and prescribed bounds for it, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far shall you come no further, and there you shall proud waves be stopped. The word of the Lord. Our second, our second reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 through 13. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, At an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See now is the acceptable time. See now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But we have servants of God. We have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance in its afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor of dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors, and yet we are true, as unknown, and yet are well known as dying. And see, we are alive, as punished, and yet not killed, as sorrow, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to you children. Walk open wide your hearts also. The word of the Lord. to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But Jesus was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, 
Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. I, like many people, spent an unexpected large amount of my day yesterday clearing water out of my basement and had just returned home from a family wedding with grand plans to write my sermon on Saturday. And so this morning I bring you a word of good news from my friend, Pastor Katie, who is always ready to step in and lend a helping hand when her friend has unexpected circumstances <laughs> arrive. And the irony is not lost on me that Jesus is calming the storm as we are facing a truly large amount of water <laughs> in our lives. A word from Pastor Katie. On a trip to Ireland, my friend and I did a day trip to Northern Ireland where we went to two World Heritage Sites. Both were all the way on the northern coast of Ireland. And the first place we went had a rope bridge out to a small island that was historically used for salmon fishing. But as we were there in December, and the British Isles, being known for their gray, rainy, blustery weather, that was exactly what we got. The rope bridge that, although now is built with much sturdier and safer materials than it was when it was first built some 250 years ago, was wet and definitely being tossed around in the wind. I remember clinging to the rails of that rope bridge for dear life, praying that I wouldn't die while trying not to look down at the rocks and the choppy waves below. When we got back to the solid ground where we started, I told my friend that not dying on that bridge had been the highlight of my day. <laughs> we got back on the tour bus and we're not entirely looking forward to the next stop where we would be spending another couple hours out in the wind and the rain. But just by going 20 minutes west to the second site, the rain stopped and the sun came out the landscape along the ocean was gorgeous. My friend and I were filled with awe, entirely astonished by the beauty we were surrounded by. Our dread at spending another few hours outside was quickly replaced by wishing we could have spent the whole day at our second stop. Now, when I talk about that day trip, most of the time I barely even mention the rope bridge. <laughs> From the time we took in the sights at our second stop and onward, that was what I used to frame that whole day. The fear I felt earlier hadn't gone away, but it was no longer the defining emotion of that day. Much like the disciples in the boat, I could have easily shouted out on that rope bridge, Do you not care that we are perishing? I'm not overly keen on heights, and even less so in those particular circumstances. My shouting at God, though, would have, of course, been an over-exaggeration. I was nowhere near perishing and could have simply opted out of crossing this bridge. But for the disciples, some of whom were skilled sailors, their fears were justified. After all, this was no ordinary storm. This was a great windstorm, so great that the boat was being swamped as soon as the wind blew up. And if those disciples who knew what they were doing were afraid and feared for their lives, there was probably good reason for that. And because of that, I wonder if the thought crossed the disciples' mind to blame Jesus for being the one to suggest that they go to the other side in the first place. 
But asking if Jesus cared, they were. But asking if Jesus cared that they were perishing wasn't really a question, it was an accusation. An accusation that while a storm raged around them, Jesus was sleeping in the back of the boat, totally oblivious to everything that was going on around them. An accusation that even in the short time that they had been together, the disciples have seen some incredible miracles, and therefore, this is not the way this trip across the Sea of Galilee is supposed to go. An accusation that Jesus didn't care about them at all. After waking him up, Jesus doesn't even have the graciousness to stop and talk to the disciples either to panic with them or to give them a false sense of hope that everything will turn out all right. How often do we respond like the disciples did? There's plenty in our world that elicits our fear. We pray or maybe shout at God, wishing that we could control the storms or stop all the scary things from happening. Or maybe we trust in our own abilities that we can take on all of the, challenge, the challenges that we meet in life, but too often we find we can't measure up to every obstacle, to every fear that we come across. And when that happens, we turn to God like the disciples turned to a sleeping Jesus. And we wonder how God could possibly just be ignoring us in our moment of crisis. What we see is God sleeping through our crises can be enough to tip the scales from fear to anger. We accuse God of not caring, of abandoning us in our moment of greed, of need, excuse me, we get mad that God isn't doing anything. It can almost become a vicious cycle, which makes us even more fearful, which makes us even angrier. In those moments, it feels like God is just sleeping in the back of the boat without giving us a second thought. But just because Jesus may be sleeping doesn't mean that he has abandoned his disciples. Like the disciples in the boat, we are not left hanging. Just because Jesus is sleeping doesn't mean that he doesn't care. At first, what momentarily seems like Jesus is ignoring the pleas of the disciples is actually Jesus getting straight to the cause of the disciples' fear. He gets up and immediately rebukes the storm. They might have expected a word in between those things, a word of comfort for themselves, an assurance that there was nothing to fear. Instead, Jesus immediately hops to it and demonstrates his divine nature. In the story of creation, the wind moved over the face of the waters, and God was the only one to create order out of chaos. In our reading from Job, God reminds Job that God is the one who has been in control of the world from the very moment it was created, not mankind. Jesus commands the storm, peace, be still. And the storm not only eases, but there is a dead calm. If it weren't for what the disciples had just witnessed and the fact that Jesus is with them, this might have seemed more like the kind of eerie calm that happens just before a storm. Or, in their situation, before the storm gets even worse. But as they are here with Jesus, they can rest in his assurance of peace. This peace is no ordinary feeling. 
Jesus just calmed the wind and the waves. Up until this point, only God has ever been able to pull calm in the midst of chaos. Jesus demonstrates his divinity by being able to do what only God can do. In this swirling mix of emotions between fear and relief, Jesus asks them, why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? We so easily read these questions as contempt or criticism that the disciples haven't measured up to Jesus' standards. And perhaps because we read into these questions, perhaps we read into these questions because we're worried that if Jesus were to ask us the same questions, we would come up short. But what if we instead read these questions as an invitation to faith? Rather than a criticism, this is a genuine question. Why are you afraid? It's a chance for the disciples, and by extension, us, to consider that even in the face of the greatest storm, the storm and our fears do not have the final say. Are we afraid because we can only see the Jesus that is sleeping at the back of the boat, not doing what we want or expect him to do? So often we want God to do things for us rather than experience things with us. The questions Jesus asks seems like the opposite ends of the spectrum, that if we have faith, then we will have no fear. But that isn't the case at all. We still experience plenty of fears in our lives. Faith does not ensure that we will have smooth sailing, but our faith promises us that no matter what, God will be with us and will care for us in every circumstance. While God may not calm the raging storms around us, When we turn to our faith, we might hear a small voice whispering to us, Peace, be still. It tells us that the storms that rage outside of us do not have to consume us. Jesus asks the disciples why they are afraid and if they have faith and it leaves them filled with awe. Out of what they expected to be their certain deaths, they witnessed a miracle. Their fear and their awe follow so closely on the heels of each other that there is, at least for an instant, a moment where they must have experienced both at once. Jesus doesn't offer false hopes that the storm really isn't so bad and there really is nothing to fear. But neither does he brush off what he has just done in calming the storm. He allows room for both their fear and their awe, for doubt and for faith to exist at the same time. And so Jesus does for us too. He never discredits our fears or our doubts, but instead shows us that the fear and the doubt will pass. Maybe fear and awe go hand in hand because we find that even in the midst of our storms, when we remember that they are only a passing thing, that we can wonder at creation while still worshiping the Creator. When we remember that, even through our greatest fears, we can still be left in awe of what all that God does in this world. Amen.
invite you to stand as we sing our hymn of the day, number 763. My life flows on in endless sun. our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He descended into before the triune God to pray for our communities, ourselves, and our world. Merciful God, equip your faithful people to approach this world with a sense of wonder. Make your church a safe place to explore big questions troubling doubts and honest laments. Humble our hearts to repent of the ways that communities of faith have inflicted pain or trauma. Merciful God, 
You spoke creation into order from the chaos of the swirling deep. May your name be praised by rivers and seas, wetlands and waterfalls. Secure clean water for all people and protect water sources from contamination or exploitation. Be with all who are in areas experiencing flooding. Bring protection and assistance and be with them as we work to restore. Merciful God. Amid whirlwinds of division, violence, and conflict, remind us again that you are steadfast as the foundations of the earth. Rejuvenate peacemakers, advocates, and community organizers when they feel weary in their work. Merciful God. Deliver your people from their distress, O oh God. We lift before you all who are sick or struggling, especially all those who are named in our prayer list and whose names are on our hearts now. Grant consolation and peace to all who live with chronic, terminal, or persistent illness. In times of affliction or hardship, sustain us in faith. Merciful God. Enfold all travelers with your protection. Bless the comings and goings of this assembly as we travel for leisure or for work. Let all journeys be met with hospitality on the way and let community members return to us with celebration. Merciful God. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation for all the redeemed of the Lord. Joined together with the great cloud of witnesses, we give thanks for your steadfast love and your wonderful works. Merciful God, receive these and all our prayers, O God, and come quickly to our aid through the power of the Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of peace with one another.
pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal of your word. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O oh God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith. Increase our hope and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O oh God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, announcements before we conclude our worship this morning. We continue with our summer worship. We are working on picking a date to have worship out at the lake, so stay tuned for more information on that. And Faith is still worshiping at 5.30 p.m. on Wednesday evenings. And we will continue at 8.45 here on Sunday mornings. Is there any announcements, things going on we need to know? It's summer. <laughs> any milestones to share today? Oh. Um, Monday of the hour. 58th anniversary of Monday.
Patty has been waiting a good long while for a surgery to be scheduled, and it is finally a go on Thursday, correct? And so, let us offer a prayer of word for Patty. Good and gracious God, you bring healing and comfort and peace in the midst of the trials of this life. Be with Patty and with all who care for her in the coming days. Be her comfort. Be her guide. May she be reminded of the love of this community as we shower her in prayer and wrap her in our love. In your name we pray. Amen. Peace, you are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. 